let's keep doing some problems. So in the last time I said what is the chances of what are the chances of getting uh not getting any heads if I flip the the uh the coin. I was going to say dice, but I realized we're dealing with a coin. If we flip the coin seven times, and we said, well, that's the same thing as getting seven tails in a row. And that's one half to the seventh power, right? Because each trial, there's a one half of getting the exact same, a one half chance of getting the exact thing that we want, which in this case is tails. And you multiply it times itself seven times, and you get one over 128. And it actually turns out that there are actually one over 128 possible results that we can get equally probable results and why do i say that well what's the probability what's the probability of getting i don't know all heads and then the last flip i get is tails so heads 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 so i'm doing it 7 times right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then the last time i get a tails right well this is if you can think of it this is exactly one particular result out of the total results that we could get. And what's the probability of this? Well, there's a 1 half chance of getting a heads, 1 half chance of a heads, 1 half chance of a heads. Let me switch colors. 1 half chance of a heads, 1 half chance of a heads, 1 half chance of a heads, and then 1 half chance of a tails. But once again, this is just 1 half times 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 1 half, which is equal to 100, 1 over 128. So any particular, um, I don't want to say, combination because we'll learn a little bit about permutations and combinations in future videos but any particular uh, uh set of of circumstances we want is 1 out of 128 of the total number of uh outcomes that's what I should use instead of circumstances outcomes if i have any particular outcome so this is a particular outcome there well, the way to view it is there are 128 particular outcomes so if i choose one of them my odds of getting it is 1 out of 128 so let me ask you a question. What's the probability of getting exactly exactly one heads? What's the probability of getting exactly one heads? So what does this mean? This means I could get oh I could get uh, tails 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 and let's say we're doing it let's say we're doing it 5 times just so I don't waste too much time. Out of five rolls, out of five flips, out of five flips. So that could be tails, tails, heads. That could be, as you can tell, I switch colors arbitrarily. That could be tails, 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 head, tails. Right? I think you get the pattern. Tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. That could be tails, heads, tails, tails, tails. That could be tail. Oh, sorry. That could be heads, tails, tails, tails. So if you if we look at it this way, there's there's this probability. There's actually how many events, uh, how many outcomes would satisfy the statement exactly one heads? Well, there's one, two, three, three, four, five. And the way you could think of it is we're going to do five flips. Exactly one of the flips is going to be heads. It could be any one of those five flips. So. It's there are five situations in which that happens, and I notice I said exactly one heads because if I said at least one heads, then we would have to take into the circumstances where we have, um, you know, two heads, and then it becomes more complicated. And we'll learn more about that when we do combinations. So what is the what what are the chances of any one of these possible outcomes? Well, if we just look at this one, this there's a chance of one half, one half, one half, one half, one half. So it's one half to the fifth power, which is equal to 1 over 32. And you use the same logic. Each of these, this is 1 over 32, 1 over 32, 1 over 32, 1 out of 32. And in general, when I'm flipping a fair coin five times in a row, there are going to be 32 possible outcomes. And each of these is just one of the particular outcome. And we're essentially saying, out of the 32 outcomes, five satisfy the the event that we're looking for exactly one heads out of five flips so there are five that satisfy it out of a total of 32 outcomes and so using that definition only if we can say that all of the outcomes are equally probable the probability is 5 over 32 and then you could say well let me make it a little bit more complicated what is the probability of not getting 
exactly one head. So here there's a lot of, lot more circumstances that satisfy it. So for example, uh, let's let me throw out a couple that would satisfy it. Well, you could get all tails. You could get all tails. But also, if you got two heads, that would satisfy it, because you didn't get exactly one head. So this would also satisfy it, right? And so you might say, well, if we do it like this, it's really complicated. But or you could say, well, these these five over thirty-two are the only outcomes that don't satisfy, that do not satisfy this condition. So the other, the rest of the thirty, of of what thirty-two minus five is what twenty-seven. The other twenty-seven outcomes will satisfy this. So you could say that this is equal to, and this is a common trick in a lot of probability problems. This is equal to one minus the probability of it getting exactly one heads out of five flips. And that is equal to, you know, one is the same thing as 32 over 32, minus, what's the probability of this? Well, we figured it out. It's 5 over 32. And that equals 27 over 32. So that's just always something to keep in mind. Sometimes when you get a probability problem, you it, it seems difficult to solve that problem, but it's actually not that difficult to solve the opposite problem. So you say, well, it's hard for me to exact to directly figure out the probability of not getting exactly one heads. I'd have to know combinations all of this. But this is the opposite of getting exactly one heads, and that's an easier thing for me to figure out. So if I can figure out that probability, all of the other outcomes would satisfy the opposite one. Hope I didn't confuse you. So anyway, everything we've done so far, it's been dealing with coins and fair coins and that's you know, that's interesting to a certain degree, but let's let's make it so that, you know, the different outcomes have different probabilities. So let's let's do free throw percentages, because I think this is something that um we all, you know, if if we watch basketball or play at all any 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 basketball, we're we're familiar with the idea. So let's say that I and this is not true, I I only could wish. Let's say that I have an eighty percent free throw percentage. So that means every time I go to take a free throw. There's a 80% chance there's a basket, and that there's a 20% chance there's no basket. And how's that? How is how does this come up with? Well, you know, we'll, we'll do more on statistics later. And the really probability and statistics are opposite sides of the same, I guess, coin you could say. But someone says, okay, you know, out of the last hundred times Sal took free throws, he's made 80. So in general, he has an 80% chance. Of of making a particular free throw, but it might not have been 100. I might have taken a thousand free throws and I made 800. Um, but that's where you come up with the the 80 percent from. So that's fair enough. So we could call that, you know, so the 80 percent is p, and then a, a common um, notation is the 20 percent is one minus p, right? If I have an 80 percent chance of making the shot, I have a 20 percent chance of missing the shot, right? So my question to you, let's let's do kind of the same examples we did with the coins. What's the probability of me making, I don't know, three shots in a row, three baskets in a row, or three free throws in a row? Let me say free throws, because this is my free throw percentage, not my overall shot percentage. Well, by the same logic, it's going to be equal. I would have to get 80. I would, the first one I have to get right. Then the second one I would have to get right. I would get, have to get a basket and not, you know, there's a 20%. I mi- I have no basket. And then the third one I would have an 80% chance, right, of getting a basket. So this is I didn't draw the rest of the tree, right? It gets pretty broad. But in general, just from the coin example, you can just multiply these probabilities, right? So then you get so 80% is the same thing as 0.8. So we get 0.8 to the third power. And I don't know what is that. Let me see. It is 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8 is equal to 51.2 or 0.512. 51.2% is equal to 0.512, which is equal to 51.2%. So I have slightly better than even odds of making three free throws in a row, which which is pretty good. 
And as you can see, I, I don't have an exponent on this cheapo Windows provided calculator I use, so I have to apologize for that. So we might have to limit our exponent size. But anyway, that should hopefully, um, well, that's a little bit of a taste. In the next video, I'll do a lot more examples with the free throws and the basket, and we'll even learn a little bit about conditional probability. See you soon.